And for more on this, we're joined by our international affairs commentator, Douglas Herbert. Hi. Doug, with, hi. Uh, with the war still going on, does it surprise you that these cases are moving forward so quickly? No, and the Ukrainian prosecutors have made it very clear why they are moving ahead, uh, you know, and it's not haste. Uh, they basically want to move rapidly, more rapidly than the Russians are, are moving, because they want to prevent, essentially, uh, the Russian side, uh, the, the authorities in Moscow, from imposing a falsified narrative, that is, using toxic propaganda and disinformation to compile an alternate reality of war crimes cases, but in this case, the ones compiled in Moscow, of Ukrainian uh, soldiers and Ukrainian citizens uh, presumably committing war crimes against their own citizens. Uh, like I said, it's an alternate reality fueled by a toxic, propaganda-driven narrative, according to which Ukrainian Nazis throughout this war are responsible for the dead bodies we've seen on the streets of the cities from which Russians have retreated, uh, and, and, and basically that this narrative is continuing to play out here. Right now, there is a committee in Moscow that's been set up. It's called the Investigative, the Russian Investigative Committee. What is it doing? As the Ukrainian prosecutors uh, have said that they have compiled now evidence of 12,000 cases and counting, and this is the tip of the iceberg uh, of, you know, with eyewitnesses and facts on the ground uh, mounting of atrocities by Russian troops, the invading, occupying troops in this war. The Russians are trying to s turn that narrative on its head, and that this special committee they've set up is trying to create a narrative, a counter-narrative, to try to jump ahead to create facts or trumped up facts on the ground about pre alleged Ukrainian war crimes. Let me be very clear here. Um, objectivity does not require me to say on the one hand the Russians say, on the other hand the Ukrainians say. War is hell. Yes, all sides commit atrocities in war. The overwhelming preponderance of the evidence and the eyewitness evidence and the survivor's evidence in this war points to Russian atrocities, atrocities and war crimes by Russian soldiers against Ukrainian citizens uh, and wounded soldiers. That is the preponderance of evidence. That is simply fact. So no false narratives here, uh, just laying out the facts as the prosecutors see them now. Well, so this is a legal proceeding. How does something uh, qualify as a war crime? Uh, well, you know, this is the great debate, right? Because there's no universal scientific definition of war crime. However, what there is are universally and conventionally uh, globally accepted standards and norms. War crimes were basically, they're created in order to have rules of war, which sounds like an oxymoron, rules of war, but in order to prevent barbarity, na namely against civilians and against uh, wounded soldiers in armed conflicts. Let me just bring up a quick chart here to show you how this war crimes, as enshrined, uh, codified, enshrined in several international treaties and conventions, including the Geneva Convention of 1949 after World War II, these are from the Rome Statute, which set up, which created the International Criminal Court. And there are just a few bullet points. What is a war crime? As universally accepted, targeting of civilians in armed conflict. We're talking about war. So war crimes as opposed to crimes against humanity, which don't necessarily have to be in war, um, or genocide, which is a whole different category. War crimes during war. Willful killing, willful being the operative term. Torture or inhumane treatment, including rape of women, repeated rapes, rapes of women, which we're hearing throughout the, uh, the this war in Ukraine at the hands of Russian forces. Um, and also using child soldiers, perhaps not in this conflict, but in others. Uh, in combat. Attacking, bombarding non-military objectives. That sounds quite familiar uh, based on all the reports we've been hearing uh, in recent weeks, whether we're talking about Kharkiv or initially Kiev or Mariupol, obviously, the emblematic uh, martyr city of Mariupol. Uh, destruction of property without military necessity. The Russians will say everything, no civilians have been targeted in this war. Everything we have been targeting is a military target. That is their official propaganda. The reality, as we know, is far different. Schools, hospitals, theaters, residential buildings have repeatedly been targeted. The deporting of populations and the taking of citizens as hostage, these are also elements that are emerging from this war. Okay, we'll have to leave it there. International Affairs commentator Doug Herbert. Doug, thanks a lot.